If I could use one word to describe borderline personality disorder, it would be the word unstable. These patients have unstable sense of self, unstable relationships, unstable moods. They're very impulsive. I think two other characteristics uh, um, commonly seen in these patients is they will do almost anything to avoid feeling abandoned. I want to um, say that the abandonment doesn't have to be real, it can be imagined. And, and probably the hallmark of the disorder or what people most frequently know about it is they tend to be um, quite self-destructive. In these life. patients um, will make frantic efforts to avoid a sense of feeling abandoned. You know, they will be very needy and dependent. Now, as I say that, you know, while they're very needy and don't want to feel abandoned, it should be mentioned that that dependency on others, while they both feel it's absolute, while they feel it's absolutely necessary to their continued existence, they also find it rather terrifying and intimidating. It's incredibly variable within a single patient depending on what time of day you catch them and what kind of mood they're in. Um, they, most of them will report a chronic dysphoria and unhappiness. They often have feelings of emptiness. Um, their relationships with other people tend to be very stormy and ungratifying. They often will fluctuate between totally idealizing you and completely devaluing you. So at one moment, you're like the most wonderful guy they've ever met in their entire lives. And the next second, you know, if you disappoint them or do something to upset them, they hate your ass and never want to see you again. Which can explain some of the uh, interpersonal dysfunction in these people. And probably one of the best ways to become a borderline is to get raised by one. So we, in higher family incidents may represent um, a learned behavior. There's also another school of thought that this is developmental. In other words, there's a lot of literature devoted to examining the developmental deficiencies in parenting that patients with borderline personality received or actually failed to receive. It is interesting to note that a, a large number of these patients have childhood histories of sexual abuse, physical abuse, and or neglect. Because these patients are prone to making suicide attempts or suicide gestures is that, you know, you could really I think the other dangers involve uh, chaotic, uh, stormy, ungratifying interpersonal relationships with other people. Um, mostly based on these uh, patients, you know, fluctuating moods and presentation as well as their tendency to become incredibly angry. It's difficult for them to have relationships that are meaningful or that last to any certain to any degree. They are prone to um, depression and uh, anxiety disorders as well. So it's, it's uh, quite common for these patients to get diagnosed with a variety of mood disorders, anxiety disorders, and as well as uh, eating disorders and substance abuse as well. It's very common for these patients to have histories of physical abuse, sexual abuse, and or neglect. It would appear that that may represent a risk factor. Uh, it is also more common in the first degree relatives of patients with borderline personality disorder, which might represent a genetic component or perhaps even a learned response. There have been books and books and books written about the psychotherapy of borderline personality disorder. I think in general though, it's, it's trying to develop some insight in these patients that their behavior is actually responsible for people's reactions to them and the chaos in their lives. You know, treatment, the individual psychotherapy with a borderline patient can be very challenging because they are very, they will try to recreate the chaos in their external lives, the internal chaos they feel. They'll try to recreate that in the psychotherapy setting. So, you know, if you have a borderline patient in psychotherapy, hold on, <laughs> it's going to be kind of a ride. You've got to be able to tolerate um, the ups and downs, you know. Oftentimes, it will almost appear as if the patient is trying to go from crisis to crisis to prevent any meaningful work getting done in therapy. Um, and a lot of what you end up doing is managing those crises. 
What we end up doing is treating a lot of the symptoms. Lots of um, mood stabilizers or anticonvulsants have been used um, to address the impulsivity seen in these patients or even the rage attacks that they're prone to. Since um, many borderline patients meet criteria for mood and anxiety disorders, it's very common for them to get treated for that as well. Um, and then they are prone to transient psychoses when they get stressed out, and uh, so it's not uncommon to see them on low-dose antipsychotics.